All right, so hi everyone. I'm Sarah Muse on behalf of Open Studio Tour Roanoke, and uh, we are interviewing Annie Schultz today, and uh, we're going to find out a little about her artwork and uh, a little bit more about her as well. So welcome everyone. So hi Annie. Hi. What can you tell me about yourself? So what's your name and the name of your business? So my name is Ann Janney Schultz or Annie Schultz as people know me now. And um, I grew up in Roanoke. So, um, and I have been an artist since, I don't know, 1994 or something, been painting. Um, and my business is now called A. Janney Schultz or Ann Janney, I don't know, I keep changing it. <laughs> Annie J. Schultz Art. Um, and uh, because we're here at Art on First, which is also a business that, um, that I now have. So they're all uh, working together in my head. Mm -hmm. But um, Annie J. Schultz Art and A. Janney Schultz at Gmail is how you can find me or hashtag A. Janney Schultz on Instagram. So what's your background? Uh, my actual background uh, for my actual. art, my actual <laughs> background, well, there are two things. Well, background I, in everything. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I spent a lot of time, I spent most of my career working with uh, young children and working in Head Start and early childhood. Um, I, my major, I graduated from Hollins in psychology, and then I got a master's degree from Virginia Tech in um, early childhood or child development. And I worked um, in childcare for a while, started the child care center for a community hospital and started another one for Dominion Bank. First one in the country with, uh, that we cared for infants. So that was my world for a while. And then I went to Head Start and worked for TAP for a few years. And then I, I went to the regional and national Head Start Center and worked traveling, helping uh, Head Start programs meet the, meet the standards and train their teachers. and and do the things that they need to do for Head Start. And then I retired. Um, <laughs> when my, I, I, my husband got sick and so I had to just stop. And, um, and but I, while I was doing all of that, um, I retired in 2015. I started making art in about 1994 um, in pottery. So I was a potter for about 20 years. Um, and I was a member of that, one of the first members, I think, of the Blue Ridge Potters Guild, which it wasn't called then, it was just the Blue Ridge Potters Association or something. Uh, but I, uh, so I, I loved doing that. Um, and I finally had to sell my kiln and um, all my stuff, again, because I was taking care of my husband and moving and stuff like that. So I, um, I did that for a long time and I took a painting class with Judy Bates actually it was my first painting class uh, other than the classes I took as a kid at the um, Arts Center on Cherry Hill excellent which was wonderful um, so I took a took a class with Judy uh, it was a watercolor class and I took a couple of classes with her and learned a lot um, and then I just kind of kept on going and um, doing pottery raising two kids all of that until uh, until now, and now I'm a um, full-time artist and gallery owner as of two months ago. <laughs> and um, so I'm trying to balance time um, sitting in front of the computer doing doing gallery stuff and painting, but I do try to, it was nice that this is my studio and my office, so at three o'clock when the gallery closes, I get up and go in the studio and paint for a couple hours, and that's really great. I've been trying to paint every day um, so that I get back into it. Um, I have to go through periods of when I can and can't. Um, so there you go. Excellent. And you are downtown your studio and your live space. Or yes. Downtown. We live upstairs in this building and this is, uh, our studio as well. And our, um, and our gallery and it's right on the corner of first and Kirk across the street from Fortunato restaurant. And, um, and we have a column outside that uh, Tubes painted for us in the style of, of Gustav Klimt. So you can find us there at my studio, Rick's studio, and the, um, and the gallery. Excellent. I <clears throat> love it. Um, so you kind of touched a little bit on was it that, that there was a time that you, you discovered pottery and then the time that you discovered your painting. Mm -hmm. um, so what transpired? Was there some... 
a fun moment or was there something that ignited your passion to to be able to do either one of those and, and you know what what inspired it when you started the pottery and then what inspired it to start um well i and i used to do stained glass and a lot of other things like that so i had i have a child with a disability severe disability so she required a lot of time and energy and I wasn't really able to do much then except after she went to bed I would go down in the basement and do my stained glass um, so I always wanted to do something creative but um, when she got a little bit older and we were able to get some more care and she was in school and um, things like that I, I just was kind of looking for another creative outlet and uh, I had a friend who was taking pottery class at um, the Brambleton Center and I heard about it so I signed up for it and we've now been friends for almost 30 years. We, we There was a group of, of us who started uh, together and we would go over there on Saturday morning when they opened and we would close them down at nine o'clock mm -hmm. Saturday night having ordered pizza and very known for that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we spent all day. It was wonderful. So I did a lot of time doing pottery and then my husband was very sweet and bought me a pottery wheel and I bought a kiln so I had a home studio. So that kind of got me ignited with that and as the better and the more I did it, the better I was able to control it mm -hmm. and, and make pieces and that. So I would sell a fair amount uh, at the pottery show, which was at Cape Spring High School at the time. And, um, and then as far as painting, um, I, I just always wanted to do art. I always wanted to make art and I was doing everything else but, uh, but that was really where my passion was. So I decided I just needed to follow my passion and take some painting classes. So Judy helped kick me off in that, that direction. And um, so I did watercolors for a while and then I decided I just wanted to try oil. So I took some other classes and took some online classes because <laughs> I couldn't get out that much um, with Allison, but um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing ever since. You did it before it was cool. I did it before it was cool. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so let's kind of talk about your artwork a little bit. We've got a couple pieces hanging on the wall mm -hmm. here, and then I want to go into your studio and kind of talk to you about what your process is, what tools you use, all the different okay. things. Okay. Mm -hmm. So um, do you want to start here? Do you want to start in your... Okay, start here. Tell, yeah, tell me a little bit about... And you don't have to get specific about each one, yeah. but if you just want to talk about whatever, whatever, whatever sparks your... Well, so... When I paint things, I paint things that inspire me. I love light, I love color, and so that little, there's a tree over here that um, actually I saw out of my apartment window uh, where I was living for a while, and that's a Roanoke River birch tree. And the light um, and the color in that birch bark just grabbed me every day I'd go for a walk and I would see that, so I thought, I gotta paint that. And same thing with the one above it, which was a view of the Roanoke River from the little bridge that goes over to the park. Um, I was walking one day and I looked up and I saw that view and I thought, okay, that need, I need to paint that too. So those are some of the things that really inspire me. And, um, and the one up here in the middle, the flowers, I was cleaning my palette one day and I just had all these colors. I had a lot of paint left. So I took a palette knife and I just started slapping paint on the, uh, on my, uh, canvas and it turned into that, um, which was a lot of fun. I came back and tweaked it a little bit, but mostly that's just kind of, that was what was on my palette at the time. And I can't even tell you which painting I was doing that I scooped that paint from. So that's your experimenting, that was my playing, experimenting, just, just playing. allowing. And I think that you get more creative and more open when you play. And so I do try to play from time to time. Um, this was inspired by just a photograph that a friend sent me when she was in, um, I think they were in Maine or somewhere. And she sent a photograph and said, look what I just saw. And so I thought, and it reminded me also of uh, a, a lily pond in, uh, in Durham, North Carolina when my husband was in the hospital and I spent a lot of time there looking at that pond. So that makes me feel peaceful to look at that. Um, and the others, um, these, this was in Lucca, Italy. It was a tunnel in Lucca and there's a little bicycle there that I added. I actually extracted that bicycle from Siena and brought it over to Lucca and decided it just needed some mystery. Like, 
who was riding that bicycle in that tunnel and where is he now? And if he came from Siena, he's probably taking a nap somewhere. So I did that. And the other thing that inspired me also is the light. The light in the tunnel was just wonderful. So I asked Rick to take a photo for me and he did. And um, so that's, that's from his photo and my memory. Um, and then this, I went on a, um, an art retreat, a plein air art retreat in Maine, in Lubeck, Maine. Um, and it was amazing and Rick went with me. So we, this was an old Coast Guard station and we had a cabin. Uh, it had a bunch of different cabins that were residences while we were there. And that was our view from our cabin, which was just amazing because the light, again, light was gorgeous. And in the background, the sunset, we got amazing sunsets every night. And you'll see some of those sun, one of those sunsets when you look at Rick's work. But um, so things that inspire me are light or or just something that grabs me viscerally. And those two also. Speaking of sunsets. sunsets yep. Yeah. We were having dinner in Portland, Maine, uh, on a out, little outdoor deck, and the guy in the boat who is swirling around really fast and going home. Um, was showing off for all of the diners. He was doing circles and swirls and, and he thought that would be cool to do. And then um, when he got tired of doing that and we got tired of seeing him, he went and took off for home. And I just loved the pattern that the boat made. And I was thinking about going home at the end of a long day. So that's what that was. And this was just a sunset from the same place, from Portland, Maine. Um, just looking across the the bay and um, seeing these the the rocks and the little jetties and the sun kind of bouncing off of them at sunset, another light thing for me. That's that made it just amazing. So those are the ones that that I've got here, and then there's a sunflower over there that we couldn't fit over here. So, um, <laughs> but this that's that's kind of what inspires me is light and. Um, and sunsets and uh, just things that make me feel calm. Awesome. Well, let's go to your studio. And so, what are what are what materials do you use? What's your medium um, now? Oil. What do you, I, so I you paint with oils? I've tried acrylics numerous times, and they did not make me happy. I'm not a big mm -hmm. acrylics fan. Um, maybe I, I know that some people have just done amazing things with acrylics, and I'd like to learn that. But at this point. I like oil because it's buttery and it's pliable and you can change it and you can scoop stuff off and make flowers and um, so that's why I love it. And so I, I, I come in here and these are my daily paintings on the wall. Um, those are um, ones that I just, you know, like that's our olive oil collection in the kitchen. And that's a, that is actually a photo a friend of mine sent and I, I thought the shadows were so cool. And that's literally my pegboard from my studio. Um, that's my sister's house in France. Uh, that was not a daily painting, but that was, and then that, that's uh, my desk right here. Um, <laughs> my pencil holder on my desk. Uh, and there we go. so, yeah, we have all of those things. This was um, a photo, I mean, a painting that I did uh, for my daughter because that's her bathroom window. She has uh, glass blocks, and that was a fun challenge to do mm -hmm. glass blocks and, and get the light and the swirliness of the blocks and then the flowers. So that's that. And now so, I'm in the, hmm? so how do you how do you typically start? Do, um, are you starting with a sketch or are you I start starting... with an idea, a sketch, and I'll take maybe, I'll tone a canvas with this particular color. Usually it's um, either, uh, burnt umber or maybe yellow if I want something to really come out brightly. And so I, I tone the canvas and then I take a little burnt umber and I do a sketch um, and get the basic idea. And then I, uh, I just kind of start with the darker colors and get that kind of sketched in because that kind of brings out the other things that I want. Is that about where this And one both of these are in the very early stages of of development this was um, a whole bunch of tulips that we saw in new york city and they had yellow at this yeah the pink tulips are in there i haven't even painted those yet and i'm just beginning to work on 
on the other ones just to get the shapes and get an idea, but they were sort of glowing in the light at the end of the day. So by the time I finish, I'm hopeful that I can capture that glow that they had. Um, so I will, you have to stay tuned for that. I'll have this finished probably by the time I open studios here, I'm sure. And then this um, is, I bought some tulips because I love tulips and I just decided I wanted to, um, oh, I just decided I wanted to, um, to paint some more tulips because I was having a good time. So I went out and bought these tulips. It's been, a, I've had a terrible time trying to get them to bloom. Um, they were, uh, they were, they're still in bud stage, but I just kind of took them and they were the beginning and I just, imagined a kitchen with a sunny window and tulips sitting on the table and there I am and I, I tell you I have to admit I read somewhere that forest green is the color for kitchens these days I don't know where I read it but I thought okay I'll go with that so that's why that's green it might not stay that color but for now that's where I'm going with it and um it's great uh, what I also find out is for my process it it I do not map out every color and mix all the colors ahead of time. I have to say, all my teachers would probably tell me I should be doing that, but I just don't. I do mix the colors ahead of time, but, um, but I don't map everything else. It evolves. Once I've got the basic sketch, like this table used to end here. I don't like it that way. I want the table to keep going that way. And I've just started to scrape it off. And that's another thing that I do. I scrape things off sometimes. If it doesn't work for me, I just, I don't try to make it work. I just scrape it off and start, start again. So the tulips haven't been painted yet. They're gonna be red and uh, there's gonna be sunlight and clouds. And I hope I can get the feeling of backlit tulip petals. That's my plan. Um, so there you are. That's the way I do that. And um, I do not have the neatest studio on the planet, but I keep all my stuff right beside me on my little table over here. Um, I have been known to use five or six brushes <laughs> at a time. Uh, and I, I use my computer for, for references. Sometimes I'll just look up tulips in a window just so I can get a sense of what the backlit tulips look like. Um, and it's amazing, you can find anything if you look it up, uh, it'll show up somewhere. So that's kind of what I do. Um, and I, I, like I said, I use oils. And um, I do have <laughs> lots of different oil paints. I use, usually use Gamlin just because that's, it's non-toxic. Not, Gamlin does not have uh, as much solvent in it. And I use, sol um, I use odorless, um, I don't use odorless mineral spirit, I use solvent-free gel and um, Gamsol. So all of those are solvent-free. I also have two super filters in here that filter the VOCs out of the air, so it's a little healthier. And I don't use anything that makes me, you know, that I can smell. If I can smell it, then I that tells me that maybe it's a little bit too much. Um, and I use mineral oil sometimes just for cleaning brushes and things. So that's, there's, that's there's, pretty awesome. there's the palette. And um, so the, are there certain details or things that you try to accomplish that sets you apart from others? You know, I really don't know because I don't know what others really do. I don't, I, you know, I work, I work kind of on my own. And, uh, but I've, I've, I have been told that um, light, you know, I t I've been talking about light all along. And I, I usually try really hard to make the light punch and um, make a little edge, find a little light edge. Rick has helped me a lot with that, with photography, he'll say, put a little edge on there. Um, and I try to make it just that little bling at the end. I'll, I'll finish a painting, uh, until it's almost dry, and then I go back and put the bling on. I go back and put the little the lights, lights, the little flickers of, of light. The bling. The bling. It's the bling from my paintings. I'm taking words from the jewelry industry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I put the jewelry, I, I kind of see it that way. You know, mm -hmm. it's, like the, it's like the little sparkle. You, mm -hmm. you put the earrings and the necklace on the painting, 
and uh, and then boom, it comes to life. Yeah, that's so. great. So, what lights you up about your your art? That boom when it comes to life is that one of the things that I wrote in my artist statement for some class I was taking, and I had to write an artist statement was that I said, you know, when you're doing pottery and you throw the clay on the wheel and the clay is going like this and eventually it just stops moving and it's just like everything's in harmony and it's going around and you go, ah, oh, now I can just do what I need to do with it. That's the way I feel about a painting when it's finished. I know it's finished because it has that, okay, that works. That feels good. I can, I can live with that. Uh, mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll go back the next day and try to touch it anyway but um <laughs> but the rule is don't go back and fix it because you'll screw it up and i have learned that rule so, that that is definitely yeah yeah that can happen so i try not to screw I it up i think we all all have those moments of when is it time to stop yeah exactly <laughs> and and so many of us have overworked paintings um that we do. I, and the other thing i do is i scrape off a lot and reuse canvases and re gesso them and sand them down and uh you know so um, and I like to scrape things too. I like that sense of texture that it gives. So I do that too. So what surprises you about it? Are there anything, things that come up that you're just like, oh, that's cool. Um, there are things that surprise me that used to surprise me, like how much white sucks color <laughs> out of everything. If you put white on your brush, everything is gonna be, you know, just, the, the color gets sucked out completely. You have to wait for it all to dry before you can add some good color. So I try not to do that. Um, and, you know, I think it just surprises me sometimes when I stop doing something at night and then I come back. And like when I when I learned how to paint glass and um, and the first time I sort of put the little marks on there and made that and I, I stepped back and I thought, I think that actually looks like glass. That really looks like water in there. And the glass on the, on the windowsill in the yeah. other painting too. Um, you know, it's just, um, yeah, that one. It, it, it surprises me sometimes that I actually did it. <laughs> you know, it's, that, that surprises me that I'm able to really make something that works. I've had a, I've sold a bunch of sunflowers. So there's one mm -hmm. that was a commission for someone. And um, I love doing those too. And that was sunflower in France. We had lunch in that sunflower mm -hmm. field. Um, so, so I love that so too. So you do, you do custom pieces? For I do, I do. Excellent. Yeah, the, the white, there's a white peony out here that was also a, a, a commission that, uh, a giant, giant three by four mm -hmm. foot peony. I did a That's three by four foot, uh, double sunflower for someone that was a commission so yeah i do commissions and i love to do i love flowers i love to do flowers i love to see flowers i like to have flowers in my house so i'm a flower person and i don't have a garden anymore because we live downtown so i have to paint my flowers now i love that and rick brings flowers home all the time he's sweet oh <laughs> so what makes you laugh um depends on the day what makes me laugh? Um, silly stuff this morning, I was listening to a John Prine song and he was singing about, he had a, had a story about a happy enchilada and you know, it was a, it's supposed to be half, a, half an inch of water and some lady asked him to sing the song about the happy enchilada and he told her, and he ended up, it, it was that song. So people who grew up lyrics and I don't know, I just, whatever's on my mind at the time, you know, we laugh a lot. Um, and I, you know, I have to say it was a long time before I laughed after I lost my husband in 2016. And I was really surprised that there were other people who were laughing. Why are people laughing? And then the first time I did, um, and, and Rick and I are sort of in the same boat, we looked at each other and went, we laughed. I heard you laugh out loud. I did too, it's been a long time. And I don't even remember what it was, but this, that sense of, of um, silliness is coming back and I love that so playfulness and silliness that's fantastic I love that so is there anything else that you'd like to tell us about your work um, I don't think so it's just wonderful to be back in studio and to be able to find all my stuff and have it all in the same place and um, I'm, I still 
learn every day. I'm taking a class with Erin Radicke coming up. Um, and it's, it's an online class, but it's like intense. You, you do a Zoom call in the morning and then you paint and then you upload your image and then you talk about it at noon and then you paint some more and you upload your image. You talk about it at the end of the day and that's four days of that. And mm -hmm. I love, love, love her work. She does a lot of interiors and I've been really doing and enjoying doing interior painting. I've done a lot of that too. I didn't even mention that because I don't have any available, but um, I've done, there are a bunch of them upstairs in our apartment, but um, so um, I love learning and I love um, learning new things and I love being able to have the quiet time after I close the gallery at three to come in here and turn on my music and sit in here sometimes with a glass of wine, sometimes not, just with a bottle of water and just paint. And sometimes I don't get home until, I don't get upstairs until like 10 o'clock. So that's what I love to do. That's fantastic. I love that. Yeah. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about Annie Schultz and Open Studios Tour Roanoke, head on over to our website at openstudiostourroanoke.com. We look forward to seeing you the weekend of the tour this spring, April 29th through 30th, at 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. each day. See you then.